Calaroga Shark Media. Hello, I'm Johnny Mac with your daily comedy news. Jerry Seinfeld making a lot of buzz with this clip from the New Yorker Radio Hour. Let's listen. Nothing really affects comedy. People always need it. They need it uh, so badly, and they don't get it. It used to be you would go home at the end of the day. Most people would go, oh, Cheers is on. Oh, MASH is on. Oh, Mary Tyler Moore is on. All in the Family's on. You just expect it. There'll be some funny stuff we can watch on TV tonight. Well, guess what? Where is it? This is the result of the extreme left and PC crap and people worrying so much about offending other people. Mm -hmm. When you write a script and it goes into four or five different hands, committees, groups, here's our thought about this joke. Well, that's the end of your comedy. They move the gates like in skiing. Yeah. Culture, the gates are moving. Your job is to be agile and clever enough that wherever they put the gates, I'm going to make the gate. I agree with Jerry there. The Independent does not agree with Jerry nor me under the headline, Jerry Seinfeld is wrong about the extreme left ruining comedy. Adam White writes, and this is just, it's a weak opener because it's so hack. I'll read it verbatim. What's the deal with wokeness? Jerry Seinfeld probably whispers to himself while reclining in his bathtub of money. Over the course of his 40 plus years in show business, the billionaire, observational comedian and actor has embodied a number of different guises. The stand-up, the sitcom star, the maker of B-movie, and now he's embraced another persona, the kind that truthfully must be resisted by all, the late-in-life scold. Somebody's not a fan of Jerry, apparently. If you feel like you've heard Seinfeld say this already, you're probably just confusing him with one of the other yesteryear comics who've mounted impassioned condemnations of cancel culture. John Cleese, Dave Chappelle, Jimmy Carr, Ricky Gervais, and French and Saunders have all insisted they can't say anything more, usually from the stages of their Netflix specials, their GB News chat shows. Yes, it's the super unsuccessful Jerry Seinfeld, Dave Chappelle, Jimmy Carr, and Ricky Gervais. Nobody likes them. Seinfeld's claims are particularly annoying, though. If it feels like there's been a dearth of new comedy on TV lately, it's probably to do with our modern-day viewing habits, which favor comforting nostalgia over new ideas. I'm kind of already <laughs> sick of Jerry Seinfeld stories. Uh, if you are, too, it's going to be a long week. The Pop-Tarts movie Unfrosted opens on Friday. It co-stars bourbon entrepreneur Jim Gaffigan. Amy Schumer is in this as well. We haven't seen Amy do any press yet. Let me take one more look. I think I looked this morning. Nothing from Amy yet. Jim, I've seen a little. I pushed that to Friday, but it's going to be a long week. Uh, from that New Yorker interview, Jerry says, Chris Rock is the smartest person maybe I've ever met. I was with Chris a couple weeks ago. He was talking about a young comic who was asking the comedian about what he did that day. And the guy said, nothing, but I'm going to do a set tonight. And Chris explained to him, you make money during the day. You collect it at night. During the day is where the money is made. Jerry says, comedians don't generally think they have to do more than perform on stage every night. They don't think there's more to it than that, but there's quite a bit more to it. If you have a really solid work ethic and have some sense of writing, you can move into different fields more easily. They asked Jerry what working means for him. He said, if anyone cares, here's what I did. I've been reading a lot of Marcus Aurelius's Meditations book, which I'm sure you probably read when you were 14. And the funny thing about that book is he talks a lot about the fallacy of even thinking of leaving a legacy, thinking your life is important, thinking anything's important, the ego and fallacy of it, the vanity of it. And his book, of course, disproves it all because he wrote this thing for himself and it lived on centuries beyond his life affecting other people. So he defeats his own argument in the quality of the book. I've adopted the Marcus Aurelius philosophy, which is that everything I've done means nothing. I don't think for a second that it'll ever mean anything to anyone 10 days after I'm dead. As for the Pop-Tarts movie, how did it come together? Jerry said on Zoom, we'd have a meeting and the four of us, four comedy writers who love each other's sense of humor, I do a 20 minute warm up of just anything, of nonsense. What'd you do last night? What'd you eat? What'd you watch? And you start laughing and having fun. That's how comedy is done. You can't have anybody in the room who doesn't have the same brain disaffection. There's a lot of really vile profanity, complaining about absolutely everything and anything. And then you go, OK, we were working on that scene yesterday. What was that scene? Where are we going to go from here? And then you start to write. But you're in this mood now. And that's how you write comedy. If somebody else walks in the room, you have to stop and go, what do you want? Yeah, I know. Dinner's fine. Six. Fine. OK. Jerry, did you love Pop-Tarts growing up? Oh, yeah. How about now? Still, yeah. I love them. I don't eat it for breakfast. I eat it after a bad show on Wednesday night. You follow up there, Jerry. When have you ever had a bad show? A lot of times. I mean, to me, bad shows. I'm going to do four new pieces tonight. Three of them tank. It's a frustrating night. The show's still good, but I was trying to do. You're always trying to forge ahead. Did Kellogg's know they were going to do this? No. Nope. We only called them three weeks ago to tell them, by the way, 
We found a lawyer in the valley. We asked, could you write us a letter saying this is okay to do that we can show to Netflix? <laughs> Follow up. So there's no fee paid to Kellogg or no permission given or taken? Jerry said, no. You think Kellogg's would make a movie where people lose their lives trying to invent a pastry? Meanwhile, Jerry was on in-depth with Graham Benzinger and Fox recap this. Jerry said he wrestles with a darkening mood. Jerry says, sometimes I just don't feel good. And the best way to get out of it for me is work. Work is the best antidote. That's why I work so much, because for some reason you feel like you're not wasting time. I realized this tendency to get depressed. I'd never want to have that if I would lose the creative gift that came with it. It's part of an overactive brain. I wouldn't call it real depression. I don't know the word for it. The mood darkens. I get a darkening mood and I want to get out of it. More Marcus Aurelius. Marcus Aurelius says your only focus should be on getting better at what you're doing. Focus on what you're doing. Get better at what you're doing. Everything else is a complete waste of time. So I have this movie coming out. I'm so excited to read the worst reviews. Unfrosted out Friday. I put out another Substack yesterday. This one titled One Star Reviews. The Substack is free. Uh, link in the show notes. Uh, the nature of the Substack platform, they might ask you uh, to pay for it. Don't pay for it. Just click the free subscription. I'm not charging for that at all. Unless you got an extra million dollars, then if you want to dip me, fine. Or just you know, buy me uh, 200,000 iced coffees. But if you do that, please send over a refrigerator because I'll have to put them somewhere. We've got subscriptions up and running. $4.99 gets you all the shows on the platform commercial-free, as I've explained a few times, and I'll stop doing this soon. I can't publish the commercial-free version until the commercial-laden version is out there on Apple Podcasts. This show goes out at 3.05 a.m. Eastern. When I get up in the morning, I flip open the laptop and I upload the commercial-free version on Monday. It was up at 7.50 a.m., all right? So if you're up between like 3 and 8 a.m., um, I don't have a solution yet. I wish I did. I'm trying to figure this out, but I can't. But after like 8 a.m., you should be able to get the newest episode commercial free and the archives will be commercial free. Russell Brand announced that he was getting baptized. This Sunday, I'm taking the plunge. I'm getting baptized. Like it says in Galatians, you can live as an enlightened and awakened person. Chelsea Handler wants to support the WNBA. Her plan to boost TV viewership She's going to go topless at courtside. We'll see if she actually does this. She was on Twitter where she shared her plan and said how to keep the Caitlin Clark effect going. You know, Chelsea Handler used to date Joe Coy. That's it. That's just my complete thought. I don't know what you thought was going to happen there. She used to date Joe Coy. From the Sydney Comedy Festival, Ben Hunter's show is I Will Refund Your Ticket in 10 Years, I Promise. I'm going to have to interrupt a few times here, right? So the first joke here, he's holding up a drawing of coins. You guys like impressions? I've been working on some impressions. Is it okay if I show you some of them? Uh, this is an impression of uh, some coins. This is an impression of my credit card. Okay, another drawing. <laughs> This is an impression of my nipple. <laughs> this is an impression of my other nipple. That time uh, the second nipple is larger and same idea for the rest of the bit here. This is an impression of my mom. It's nice. It's nice. This is an impression of my dad. <laughs> Come to the tip with me. <laughs> Thanks, guys. And this is an impression of the other side of the coins from before. <laughs> I just flipped them over. Kind of fun. Pretty visual. Sydney's not like Melbourne. There are a lot fewer clips for me to share. I've really had a dive on all these. Uh, Steen Raskopoulos, his show's called Friendly Stranger. I like the description. Friendly stranger, I thought Steen brought the show to Sydney last year. Yeah, but it was sold out. You couldn't get a ticket. So he's back again with an updated and even better version. A stranger is a new friend you haven't met yet. It could be a dog on the street, a curious baby, or a performer who warmly invites you on stage. So this is another visual clip. Again, this is what's available, but this is really funny. I've shared it in the Facebook group, Daily Comedy News Podcast group. The gimmick here is he brings people up and has them stand in picture frames. So the people from the audience are the artwork, and they have to act out the narration that you're about to hear. Very funny, but is visual. In the clip you're about to hear, the narration is about a father and a son, but it's actually a father and a daughter, and Steen made sure that they're on the wrong side to make the narration funnier. 
Hello, and welcome to the Museum of Pretench Art. The first artwork you see is a painting by Australian artist Gareth Tinney, oh, entitled good. Fisherman and His Son. Oh, cool. You see an old fisherman casting his rod with his right hand whilst lovingly swinging his left arm around his son's neck. The son is holding a fish and smiling. It's a very, very exaggerated smile. Some art experts believe if you look at the painting from left to right, it can actually be interpreted as a hostage situation. Oh, wow. Again, it's in the Facebook group, Daily Comedy News Podcast Group. Give it a listen. And that is your comedy news for today. If you'd like the show ad-free, push that subscription button on Apple Podcasts. I explained that earlier. See you tomorrow.